Hey, what's going on YouTube? Marine X back at it again. The preparation for getting home in an emergency almost goes without being said. My evolution of the get home bag has, has been pretty good. I started, you guys saw my video earlier this year or actually last year, my old, old school tag bag, the old sandstone monster. I rucked with that thing ever since I was in the Marines. The zippers finally gave out on me. It was time for it to have another home, specifically at the trash dump. But I think I may have found the near perfect setup. So in this video, we're gonna check out my 2021 get home bag. How does it feel rucking it, all that good stuff. And we may find some additional items that you might wanna add to your kit, your get home bag, your bug out bag. I think it's a little bit more important to have a get home bag versus a bug out bag, but you know, I'll let you be the judge of that. But first, if you are the man cave enthusiast, you like survival stuff, you like tools, Tools, trucks, all that type of stuff. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Come on, join the battalion. Just we welcome you with open arms, right? Make sure you, my, you join my Discord channel as well. We're definitely always talking about something new there. We're giving ideas about how to kit out your vehicle, what to add to your kit, stuff like that. First, let's talk about a scenario for which you would even need a get home bag. Let's say you're camping far away from the house, your vehicle breaks down. Let's say you've run out of gas and you're just close enough to the house where you don't wanna wait for somebody. Maybe it's late, maybe there's no one answering, maybe you don't have cell phone signal. Whatever the case may be, it is time to separate yourself from your vehicle, or in some cases, I've seen people that have been separated from other people's vehicles and they've had their get home bag and they're able to get home. I bring you my get home bag. This is the 511 Tactical All Hazards Nitro Backpack. This, I mean, let's just, let's just get right into it, man. It's 21 liter capacity. It comes in three colors. It comes in like this black color. They have a color called a double tap, which is like a gray and a black mixed together. And then they have a sandstone as well. Once again, you know 511, they're known for their heavy duty 1050D nylon. It's really designed for a travel patrol, for rescue, rescue misuse, long range tactical use. This bag is, five years old. I think it came out in 2016. It might even be six years old. It may have came out in 2015. You can also use this thing for everyday carry, Rand. You don't have to limit yourself just for using it for, you know, a get home bag. That's what I've chosen to use it for. So let's start off by taking a look at the outside of the bag and determining how this thing could be maximized. So first off, the entire bag is a part of 511s. They call it like their tier one system. So they got this system where you buy all these straps and you're basically able to attach different bags together using the molly webbing and these straps that they buy. I think it's kind of janky. I don't intend to use their systems that way. I actually like their AMP system better, which we'll talk about in the video here soon. So there's several sets of loop patches where you can add, you know, whatever you see fit. Here I have morale patches on mine. You might want to add different designators for medical or whatever, you know, whatever you see fit for different patches. But you may not want to have morale patches. Let's say, for instance, you want to add some other accessories. Maybe this is an everyday carry type item. So I got this 511, you know, it's kind of a two-in-one holder for an EDC flashlight and a knife. You can also stick a pin in there. So whatever you want to stick on the front of this thing, it's really up to you. So I tend to just keep some morale patches on the front of mine. The big purpose for having this big, large patch in the front, if you're a part of multiple search parties or something like that, it's easy to identify, you know, which party you're with, who you're with, you know, so that way you're not mixing or whatever. So that's the purpose of having so much loop and patch on a uh, hook and loop patches on this bag itself. So the empty weight of this bag is 3.8 pounds, so nearly four pounds. My setup, my setup is 22 pounds. Totally ruckable. I mean, just in my opinion, this is the type of bag you put together. If you ruck with it, you walk with it, you get used to it, you can definitely manage this bag with no issues, in my opinion. So first off, each side of the bag are identical, okay? so. They include two strips of hook and loop with a little bit of the, uh, or two strips of molly webbing with a little bit of this hook and loop as well, just in case you wanna add some more identification on the side. So both sides have a complete pass-through feature, meaning that from the top all the way to the bottom, you can pass different items through, whether it be an ax or breaching tools, 
I don't know, maybe you're using this for EDC and you want to pass a baseball bat through there, whatever. So you can pass completely through both sides. 511 also includes this little adapter here. So this adapter here basically allows for whatever you have passed through the system is you can use this to actually loop around that item so you don't have to, so you don't have to worry about that item kind of finding itself, uh, bring it in a little bit. So you don't have to worry about finding this item kind of falling out. I'll show you how that works as well. So first, since we already have this side exposed, let's just talk about what I keep on this side of the bag. So we have, I'm gonna just take this off. This is called the Reaper VersaTac Wrecking Bar. This is a prying tool. And the tool itself is designed, it has, you know, nail remover. It does have here on the side a ripper hook, which is good for like cutting seat belts or anything like that. And then obviously itself, it has uh, a long uh, knife kind of feature here. You can use it for hammering. It is made of 420 steel, 420C. So you can use that. And obviously you can kind of use it with sockets, you know, if you have different bolts that need to be removed. So it does have multiple functions. A small little crow par. This is not gonna be the most, you know, the tool that's gonna get you in and out of places the easiest, but it is nice to have. It does include its own little sheath. The sheath is absolute trash. It's gonna let you know that right now. So I would not recommend, the button is always coming loose. I wouldn't recommend keeping it. You can wear this on your belt. I wouldn't wear it that way. It just, it comes off very easily. Um, I'm just not a big fan of it. Also on this side, I keep a tourniquet, which is loose. So a lot of folks have tourniquets in their kits. Maybe you've never used it. Hopefully you haven't had to use it before. Maybe you can use it on a dead friend, which is just a dummy. But you wanna make sure that your tourniquet is relatively loose because most likely if you're applying this to yourself, you're gonna be only using one arm, one hand rather. So if it's still in the plastic, if it's not loose, then you're doing it all wrong. Uh, you're really kind of have it on your back for clout. You might want to get some training, learn how to use it. It is important to write the time on there as well, but I do have more medical supplies in this bag. But if I had to apply a tourniquet and it's really that bad, a, a big of a situation, I don't want to go digging around in my bag for that. So this tourniquet has hook and loop on the back. So I just recently talked about this in a made of a made in America products. This is the S wing special edition ax. Specifically, it's a 14 inch camping hatchet. I keep it on the side of the bag here and that way it's going through the pass through feature. I don't want it to slip all the way through and I also don't want it moving around when I'm actually walking with the bag. So I use that Velcro feature that I talked about earlier and you can use that feature to allow for you to keep the item from moving all around. The only thing I will say about this bag in this, this system that keeps your pass through item from moving is that they only give you one. So they give you this one you know, strap that you can move to either side, whatever side you see fit. But you know, if you do have two items that you're trying to pass through, then you're gonna have to buy another one aftermarket, probably from 5.11's website. But you just kind of take this loose and I like this because this is independent of the, of the compression strap. So I don't have to loosen the compression strap and I can still access whatever item I have in this side pocket. Run it back through the pass through area, get it ran back through, tighten this up. So the other side of the bag is a 100% about water consumption. So this bag does not include a water holder. I had to buy this off Amazon. There is plenty of molly webbing. That's probably one of the cons about this bag. But you know, I was able to pick this up off of Amazon and uh, for whatever bottle I see fit. This is the Grael Ultra Light. Now you may have seen in my Urban Fighting Kit, the Geo Press by Grael as well. This is a much larger, obviously holds more water by Grael. I like this thing. This fits well in my Urban Fighting Kit. This stays in my Urban Fighting Kit and I'll show you. Uh, so I'll link that up below just in case you're curious about that specific bottle. Grail also makes this bottle here, which is called their Ultralight. This holds 16 ounces of water. And if you don't know about Grail, this is the world's fastest way to purify water. Basically, wherever the water source you have, you scoop it up. They have a fill line, which gives you an indicator of how far you should uh, fill the water up. And you actually just take this out. So you actually fill this item or you fill this part of the bottle up with water 
once you have it, you set it down and you simply press the filter through. It takes six, so you count out to about 16 seconds, slowly press through. And what this is doing is it's filtering out pesticides, chemicals, heavy metals, microplastics. I mean, all that type of stuff is being filtered out. Now, I will say one thing that is cost prohibitive is the price. This is $70, and in order to drink it, you have to take the entire lid off and drink it, you know, kind of like a cup. Whereas the GeoPress is $90, and you can just, you know, unscrew here and kind of drink it. Both of them kind of suck to drink while you're walking. I don't really like uh, trying to drink while you know drink these while you're walking. I, I kind of like the the feature of a Nalgene bottle a little bit better when I'm trying to make that happen. You know, is your body worth seventy dollars? Is your body worth ninety dollars to get home to your family? I say yes. What say you? All right. So moving on to the back of the bag. This is a wonderfully padded bag, and it's super breathable when it comes to the back of this bag. I mean, the padding is, is really, really thick. It breathes well. I was rucking with this thing. It was 92 degrees out. It felt like 97 degrees out because of the heat index. And I just had no issues with this thing. If you look, you can see the webbing here that just allows for the moisture wicking and allows for air to pass through because of these pads. So it's extremely comfortable. Uh, I will say this, the chest cinch can be moved up or down, whatever you see fit. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can kind of see that a little bit better. So the chest cinch, I have it to where I am comfortable with it. So, but you can move this wherever you want to move it just by simply unclipping it, moving it up and down here. So the, it does have quick drop features. So you can unclip it here and drop the bag without having to take it off your shoulders. So that way, if you need to do a quick drop or if you're just super hot, and you don't feel like peeling it off, you can kind of do a quick drop. So that's something else I like as well. I'm not going to purchase the waist belt. It has the option for the waist belt. If you look down here, you can purchase the waist belt from 5.11 or some aftermarket. A, this bag feels great without the waist belt. B, I feel fat when I wear the waist belts and this bag sits high enough to where I don't need it. So what I keep on the actual um, straps, the shoulder straps themselves, is I keep a little bit of pepper gel. You've seen this in several of my videos and my Urban Fighting Kit, the sheath is black. For this kit, I do have a green sheath. And if you, you know, I've talked about this stuff before. I got just a small level of protection. It is a get home bag. So in theory, you're supposed, you're in a safe environment, but if it is a little bit of civil unrest and I'm not grabbing my Urban Fighting Kit, I do have a little bit level of protection. Once again, you kind of just put your finger in here, you press down and it presses out a gel and you know, as long as it's legal, make sure it's legal in your state. This is just a really good defense mechanism. I would recommend just personally, if you buy this stuff, buy two cans, use it on yourself, use it with whoever needs to use it, get used to it, get used to maybe grappling with it so that if you do apply this, you will know what it feels like. And so you and the enemy will both will not be on the same playing field if you know exactly what this feels like. So here I have Attached to this quick release clip here, I have an extremely, extremely powerful whistle. This whistle is from Acne Vornado. They are out of England. And it's just, I wish it was a different color, but at the end of the day, this thing puts out some decibels. If you're freaking sitting in a ditch somewhere and you had to imply that tourniquet, wouldn't you rather have a black emergency whistle that pumps out a lot of decibels than have to yell while you're freaking try not to bleed out. I would rather have that. I also have this small night eyes green light. The reason I like to keep this on my shoulder is so that if I am walking at night and I've established natural night vision because I've been outside, I don't want to completely destroy my night vision by turning on my bright flashlight. So I would prefer to have that. That last thing I have on the shoulder straps themselves is a hero clip just in case I want to add something you know maybe my map i have a map pouch in here and i might want to just keep that readily accessible so if we look at the top of the bag we'll see an oversized knock around sunglass pouch so i do have some polarized sunglasses that i keep in here i also keep two 
triple A batteries that go to my headlamp. The headlamp already has batteries in it, but it's oversized. I probably can stick some more stuff in there if I saw fit. I tend to, I keep a larger hero clip on the very top of the bag. I like to have the option to hang my bags from trees, from surfaces. This hero clip can handle up to 60 pounds, I believe. Yeah, it can handle up to 60 pounds. I already told you this bag is 22 pounds. So now I can hang this. If I don't wanna put it on the ground, maybe the ground is wet or something like that. So let's move on to the front of the bag real quickly. So we have a shove it pouch in the front of the bag. Now you can expand this shove it pouch. The way it is uh, attached to the bag right now, you actually attach these compression straps to the side of the bag. And once those are attached, so here you attach the compression straps to the side of the bag and um, you know this is how it keeps it a more slender nature but if you see fit you could actually unclip this and just allow the straps on both sides and you can now expand the capacity of the shove it pouch so maybe instead of just having a few items in here for the summer you might want to expand this out and have like a heavier jacket or carry more items in the front here. Maybe you have a helmet or something like that. Um, holding my compression straps down, I do have a Ranger Band. So this Ranger Band, I just, I keep tons of packs of Ranger Bands. Obviously it keeps the, this bag has built in, cord keeps, but I also put a Ranger Band on there. A, because Ranger Bands kind of make it so it won't loosen itself from that cord keep. And Ranger Bands are really useful. They're flammable. You can use them if you need to start a fire, stuff like that. So in my actual shove it pouch itself, let's peel this bad boy open real quick. So I keep in the shove it pouch, the flashlight that I intend to use on with this bag, this bag, it's not the most bright flashlight ever. It gets the job done. The thing I like about it, first off, it uses AAA batteries, which you guys know I love AA or AAA batteries. But another thing I like about it is once you have this thing actually on the strap, right? You could actually run this flashlight through this strap and once it's on your back now this flashlight is because of how the bag sits on it is is shining forward so you can run this on your shoulder while you're walking with the bag so I like the size of the flashlight I'll link it up um, where I grab this thing up but so and it also has a, a little bit of kind of like tactical features here so if you need to use it for self-defense you can you have it in this position and you're using it forward so uh the sam socks wool socks you talked about made in america these are some gray socks i keep a beanie in the bag itself uh most likely it's it's texas i probably won't need it but just in case it gets a little bit cold at night because even if it's summer or fall it can still get cold i keep a pair of gloves these are mechanics wear these are their fast fit gloves so just some light gloves if i need to do, you know, whatever I need to do, whether I'm using that breaching tool, I'm trying to climb a fence, whatever the case may be, I would rather have gloves to do that than to have anything else. I also keep a neck gaiter. And the thing I like about this is, you know, I have long hair, so I'm not really worried about the top of my grape, but my neck and my forehead, and I can move this to different parts of my body, shield myself from the sun, and I can also put it over my face. So staying in the front of the bag, there's a very front portion here. In this very front pocket, I keep a right in the rain pad. You've seen the spiral right in the rain pads that I have. This one here is their number 97 or 971 FXM. And I like this one because it's more of a book format, but it has the grid lines. I can rip these out. I can keep them in here. And I also keep a uh, pencil that I can use. And that's all I keep in the front pocket here. So in the very, very front of the shove it pouch, this folds all the way down. You can also roll it up if you see fit. So if we look here, I have a chem light, which I paracord in this bag as well. If I need to use it for a rescue tool, I can, or I can just snap this chem light, run it through this Molly webbing, and now have a light source for the night so that I won't get mowed down by a car. I do have some filtration masks. These are by RZ Mask. This is a really, really um, popular company right now. They make the charcoal insert mask. And that way this is gonna filter out a lot of you know toxins that can be in the air. This is not necessarily 
uh, for the times that we're in, but more for if I'm having to walk through an environment where it may not have the most clear air ever. So I keep a Silcox key in here. So I have that gray old bottle and of course it can purify some stuff. But if I'm walking in an urban environment, why not just access? You may have noticed on Walmarts and other big box stores and stuff like that, they have water spigots, but they're normally recessed inside of the building itself. So if you have a Silcox key, then you're now able to access um, the water from those buildings. So I keep a, a cliff bar in here just in case. I have more food in here as well. I have two cliff bars in here. Keep a little bit of Kleenex. And I have a uh, battery bank. So I have several battery banks and several of my kits. This is a battery bank by Snap-on. I don't think they make this anymore. If I can find it, I'll link it up. Any of this stuff, I'll link up below. And if you use any of those links, you'll be helping this channel out. So we appreciate that. This is a 6,600 milliamp hour battery. So my phone is, I believe, a 3,500 milliamp hour battery. So this can charge my phone almost two times. So it's not the biggest battery ever, but it's slender and it also gives me a clear reading of how much percentage is left. And I keep a gang of cords in here as well so that not only I can charge my phone, but I can charge this device simply by plugging it up. So I keep a signaling mirror. Now this clip is designed for like your car keys or honestly whatever you see fit. But the way I intend to use this signaling mirror is to zip this entire pocket up and to hang the mirror outside of the bag. So just as during the daytime, it'll catch the sunlight and it hopefully should gain the attention of cars that are driving by me and freaking so they won't mow me down. So chem light for nighttime and obviously the signaling mirror for the daytime. Finally, I have a Swiss Army knife in here. This thing has every, you know, all sorts of different tools that you might need all the way down to, you know, a toothpick, which I'm not sure when you're gonna need a toothpick, but you actually might be able to use that for several reasons. We have tweezers in here. We have several knives. Um, we have a Phillips head, flat head. So just a really robust tool to have. You can obviously throw a Leatherman in here. You can throw a Gerber, a Sog, whatever multi-tool. Just make sure it's high quality, something that's not gonna fail you whenever you get out there onto the road. So we're gonna move into my medical section of the bag. I'm gonna show you how this opens up 180 degrees. Every bag, every pocket on this bag opens up 180 degrees or clamshell as we like to call it. So one thing you can do is you can leave the actual compression straps engaged and just zip it down a little bit. You can access whatever you have on top. So one of the universal signs of medical is red, right? So if someone else were to discover me and I need to help, do I have a little, I keep purposely keep a red bandana hanging out of the medical pocket. But let's just say absentmindedly, I stuff this all the way into the pocket. I also have this small patch that literally says med on it. So hopefully that would be an indicator that this is where I keep my medical supplies and come help me. You can access the rest of my medical gear. Zippers go all the way down. So complete clamshell opening, as I mentioned earlier, kind of give you a full view. Now let's just look at everything. Oh, one last thing I did forget before we get inside the bag. On the very bottom of the bag, I keep a bunch of contractor bags and I'm gonna use these for several reasons. One of them, if it's raining, I can actually put these bags and cover this entire bag up, which this bag is not waterproof. It does have drain hose, which uh, one of my complaints about some 511 bags, they never have drain hose. This one has it. But you know, so I keep contractor bags on the outside of the bag. And it's bright yellow, easier to, for cars to see. So flipping this bad boy all the way open, you can see it's 180 degrees. So if you look here, the top, we'll start in this kind of this top section here. This comes with the bag, this 511 little Velcro mesh pouch. And you can move this wherever you see fit. So it has the hook and loop running all the way throughout the bag. The entire inside of the bag is orange, easier to see at night, easier to just identify gear. So I have this full of all sorts of things that I, don't, I won't touch often. 
but I still want to just have it just in case I need it. So we have some large uh, warmers in here. These are bigger than hand warmers. So I like these because, you know, I can use these for real warming. I can apply these on kidneys or something like that. I keep some utility flame in here just in case I need to stop and start a fire. And that is not necessarily going to be my intent to do, but you never know. So I have an emergency poncho in here. This is by Blue Mountain. Uh, I guarantee it's probably not the, the, the strongest, but Endure. Endure makes some phenomenal survival gear. So I have some Endure survival blankets in here. These things are humongous. I think they're like 84 by 84 inches. They're, I mean, completely engulf your body in these bad boys. And I just really like their products. This is actually 48 inches by 84 inches. Also have some Endure survival matches. So once again, they have the striker on top, they have the striker here, they also have another striker inside the bottle, so you got plenty of ways to just try to get your strike on. I keep a little bit of fire fuses, and these fire fuses, this is days and days and days worth of fire starter here. So I keep these here. Um, I also have a little bit of hand sanitizer in a one zip tie, you never know when you're gonna need that, but Got some hand sanitizer. You can also use that to help get the fire going. All right, so I keep that in the top of the bag. If we move to the other part of the clamshell itself, you can see I kind of have this thing packed. At the very top, I have a map case. I originally found this on the SC Survival bag, and I liked it so much that I actually bought an additional map pouch just to keep in other kits. It has a little hook and loop that you can put on here, put a little morale patch there. So I have the Sun 2 Compass, which is a really good compass to have and this also has a so the sun two compass is in the front pouch there's a hidden pocket back here which i keep a little bit of money tucked away and as you unfold the pouch itself you have access to whatever map you need to put in here i have mine designed specifically for the north dallas area i just need to get major highway information so i have maps that zoom all the way into like the city streets but I intend to just need to know how to navigate from highway to highway. So I bought this Molly case on Amazon just to kind of keep my medical equipment all in one spot and to keep it dry. This is by 1110. You've heard me talk about these guys before. I have them in my range loadout. I have them in my EDC bag, which I'm gonna be talking about that soon. I just like the fact that I know what's in this bag it's easy to use. It has a SWAT tourniquet in here. It has another chem light. It has Israeli bandages. It has um, a gauze in here. It has nylon. It has gloves. So, you know, a really condensed kit. Easy to deploy this kit. Also keep another uh, cr critical items I keep in here like gauze, um, some more gloves. I keep some saline in here. I keep medicines that are specific to me that I need in this bag. And then I have a huge piece of compression combat dressing. So this is really gonna help stop some major bleeding. So I keep all those items here. So whatever you decide to get, either train on it, learn how to use it, research it, watch material on it, read about it. You don't wanna ever deploy any of this stuff and you never use it at all or you've never even trained on it at least a little bit so i keep a splint here so for whatever i might need to use it for so i can use it for if i have something going on with my arm or uh, ankle or whatever or even if i need to use it for somebody else and then finally i have the day tracks rations not a big fan of these things but you know i don't intend to really stop too much i my get home bag i intend to use this for me personally because i've rucked with this i know how it feels I intend to go with this thing up to 30 miles. So just doing my night rucks with this thing, and I've done several night rucks with this already, I go 10 miles and I feel pretty good after 10 miles, that's at night. So I'm assuming if I can do that, um, I will probably feel pretty comfortable going 30 miles with this bag, but you don't, you wanna prepare for whatever you intend to go for with these. And I'm not gonna go all at once. Obviously mine will be done with breaks. We're moving on to the main part of the bag itself. So if we're looking at the bag, we were just kind of in my medical portion, the main part of the bag. This bag also includes a water bladder, which I'm not gonna run a bladder in this bag, but you can. I forgot to mention that earlier. You can just unzip the very back of the bag and you can run a bladder 
back here if you want. And that is one thing I like about this strap holder for the side of the bag is I can still access the entire bag and whatever items I have going through the breaching port is completely accessible. So they designed that breaching section for something like this. This is a Stanley uh, Fat Max Extreme. So this is a large breaching tool, something that you could easily fit on the entire pass through side of this bag and it would go through the bottom. You can hold this down, but this is uh, definitely used for some large breaches or having to pry some big doors. So if you wanna run something like that, go for it, this bag can handle it. So we got the full 180 degree opening once again, just kind of give you a shot of what that looks like. And we're gonna kind of just zoom in. So at the very top of the bag here, I keep my Benchmade. This is the Bushcrafter 162. This is a really good knife. It's made of S30V steel and it's one full piece of steel, which is surrounded by handles, meaning that it can take a beating. I also keep a piece uh, um, flint here so that just in case I need to try to start a fire the old school way that also has a little built-in compass just in case I lose my son to compass or something like that also keep a plastic um, large plastic bag in there just in case I need to keep something dry and that's all I keep in this top portion so if we move on to this bottom portion here so I have a bandana and inside of this bandana, I have a coffee filter. So obviously I know that the Grail can filter out puritans and pesticides and like large chunky stuff. I kind of want to just see if I can filter that out before I even put it in the water bottle. So I kind of keep that folded up within this bandana. And then this bandana itself, I can use for when I'm walking. So you guys may not know, but I am absolutely in love with SE products and I love their mess tin. I have several of their mess tins. I keep their mess tins just to show you. I keep their mess tins in several kits. They're just really well put together and they give you a really good baseline for survival gear that you can use. Um, so I have this clipped down with a ranger band and inside of this thing, and you know, I can do a separate video on what Essie keeps in their mess tin. Just comment down below, let me know what you guys think. Hey, and also if you're getting good content from this video, make sure you hit that like button down below and make sure you hit that subscribe button because we want to have you a part of the battalion. So this thing here is just packed out with a lot of basic survival gear that I can use um, to help me get to where I want to go. Now, a lot of this is made to be used when you're static but I don't, like I said, I don't intend to be static for too long, but a lot of this is redundancy, redundant items on purpose, just in case I need them. Flint, we got more matches. We have potable tablets in here, water tablets in here. We got some duct tape. There's all sorts of stuff in their kits and they're well-made. And then you can use this entire kit to cook or boil water. So it, it serves multiple pur purposes and you can always just keep restocking it, so forth and so on. This is a very, extremely large tarp it has these really well-made um, holes sewn into it so you can actually tie this down with some paracord which i have on the other side of the bag now you guys know i've been impressed by the midland emergency radio this thing is just so good I, I it's so good it's the first emergency radio that not only you can charge it by solar not only can you crank it and so forth and so on but you can use a gang of triple a batteries or it might even be double a i can't even remember but it has a rechargeable battery already included and you can add your own batteries you can also use it as a battery bank and charge other items from this thing as well so i mean i really i i, I don't have just so many good things to say about the midland emergency radio so i have another tarp here so my intention with having two tarps one to be a windbreak the other one for a makeshift shelter and so that way i just have multiple quick items to throw up um, for whatever situation I may be in. So I have a large emergency poncho, which is larger than the emergency poncho, which is inside the main pack. This one I will more is a little bit thicker and it can be reused a few more times. That's why I keep this specific poncho here located so I can throw on. Then I got my headlamp here. I've had this headlamp for years. I like Petzl and you know, Stanley makes some good headlamps and there's Olight has some good headlamps, but this one, I've had this thing. Uh, this one's made by Pelican. 
I, I've had this thing for like 11 years and it just keeps on ticking. It works well. This is the Pelican 2620. It's called their Heads Up Light. And I mean, it, it gets the job done. If I can still find it, I'll link it up. Hey, so that's it, man. I mean, what am I missing? What do you have in your get home bag? There might be something I might wanna consider adding to mine. Listen, I am still wanting to do, and I'm taking your submission to my new series. It's gonna be called Boost Your Bug Out, and it's gonna be called Grade Your Get Home. Whichever one you send to me, you send me in the pictures of your items, a brief description of your items. My email is in the description below. Send me some pictures of your items. We're gonna boost your bug out. We're gonna grade your get home. Might be a little bit of roasting if you got some trash. It might be some, you know, some items, some ideas that other people can take in. So I look forward to getting those submissions here soon. In the meantime, make sure you hit that like button if you like this video. I hope to hear from you guys soon and thank you for coming back. I'll see you soon.